So in this mini tip, we're going to be looking at Service Worker Toolbox. I'm Matt Gorn. I've got Adi Osmani with me. For Adi Osmani, Esquire. <laughs> be awesome to each other. <laughs> um, so yeah, Service Worker Toolbox is a library that basically helps you with building out a service worker. Is Service Worker Toolbox useful for like runtime stuff? Uh, yeah, it's largely for runtime stuff, but it also does some pre-caching and other bits. Um, generally, it's like any boilerplate stuff that you would always have to write, and some of the best practices, this just bakes into like much easier, cleaner APIs. Cool. Um, so that's the end goal of it. And the entire goal of this mini tip is just to show you how to get it set up to use it, and all we're going to do is just cache one web page that will basically serve offline. Um, so. Steps are going to be register a service worker. We then need to grab SW Toolbox. We're then going to pre-cache our page, and then we're going to serve that page up from the cache. That sounds legit. Yeah. Addy pointed out that I didn't need to put numbers next to an editor with line numbers. but Some people would call it redundant, but I'm not yeah. going to say that. So the first step is going to be we need to actually check whether the service worker is supported, which we can do with that if check, if service worker navigator. And if it is, we need to register a service worker. So we're going to register, and I'm going to create a random file, and I'm going to call it sw.js, um, and put it at the root. And putting it at the root is quite important, because it means it can control any part of your web page. And that will return a promise, so we've got then and catch. Then we'll basically do the callback if the registration was successful. Catch will be if there was any errors or anything like that. OK, so you're using promises here. And there's a, an article by Jake yep. and stuff from like last year or the year before. Super something. good, super thorough. Probably has a couple of poop jokes in there because Jake. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll link to that in the YouTube comments because if you're new to Promises, um, definitely worth checking out. So I'm adding some logging because you know I need to check whether it actually works or not. I did add in some stupid errors when I first tried this. So yeah, it's done, boo, no service workers registered. And the reason for that is that SWJS file doesn't actually exist. So got to make it. As you can tell, I'm really efficient at typing. And because the service worker is just normal JavaScript, we can just dump in like a console log to make sure it's working. And Chrome DevTools will show us that message. Yay. yay. Hello from service worker, and yay, it registered. So that's all good. So first step, registering a service worker. We've covered that. Next step is to add in SW Toolbox. Before we can add it in, we've got to get it. So you can get it from NPM or Bower. I prefer NPM for all the things. So go grab that. And the GitHub page has like an example of what you need to do, which is import scripts. And what import scripts does is basically, for a service worker, it will go and grab that file, but it will also cache that file for you and make sure it all works. So you can always rely on that being there. Um, if there's any problems with it, like being pulled down or anything, service worker won't install. So that's all nice and handy. So we import scripts. And it's all funky. I'm going to ignore that bit because, you know, reasons. And once we import it, we can actually use it by just toolbox. So it'll be added to the, the service worker's global scope. And we can do toolbox.options.debug equals true. Now, this is really handy when you first start out using this and if you run into any problems with it. Um, but it does get pretty spammy pretty quick. So if I refresh, there you go. Service worker toolbox now printing out a load of different logs. Um, as you start using this more, this will get full of stuff. But for now, it's really useful. We know it's working. So the next step is going to be we need to actually pre-cache our home page. So what that means is when the service worker is installed, it will go and grab index page and save it. So pre-cache is a method. It takes an array of strings, and it will cache whatever's in there. So that's an array of different file names that you want to pre-cache, right? Yeah, so you could do CSS, JavaScript files, anything you want. So just doing that. We can go refresh the page, and then Toolbox will be like, hey, I've got some pre-cache stuff. Pre-cache list slash. Nice. So this stuff gets pre-cached into the Service Worker cache API? Yes. Sweet. So it's different to the HTTP cache. This is a cache that you control, and your Service Worker or the actual web page can view what's inside it. Um, but that won't actually do anything right now, because we need to actually tell um, the Service Worker that when you see this forward slash request, return something. And what that return is, you can control. So here we're saying for a get request um, on the router, and when it's a forward slash get request, 
I want you to use the caching mechanism toolbox.fastest. OK, so it's got toolbox.fastest. What are the other options that it supports? Um, there's like cache only, network only. Um, they're fairly self-explanatory. But toolbox fastest I've used in this example because what it does is it makes one check in the cache, and then it does one request to the network. Ah. And whichever one is the fastest to respond um, wins. So normally, it's always the cache. But the nice thing is, is once the network request comes in, it will update the cache. And it'll be clear why that's important in a short while, because I'm going to show you a demo of why it's useful. Sweet. So I'm doing some control shift refreshes because I need to force a refresh of the service worker. And the shift basically makes it happen. So we've got some extra logging. You can see like strategy cache being printed now. And that's because it's actually serving up the web page from the cache. Awesome. To make sure it's definitely working, you can go to the network panel, click on offline, do another refresh. And you'll notice that the page is working even though we're offline. Awesome. The font has changed because Google Fonts is being used, and it can't actually pull them down. So you, you can also set up Toolbox to offline your Google Fonts stuff as well. You, you most certainly right? can because it supports cores. So if I now change the HTML page and refresh the page, because we're offline, it's not going to change because there's nothing it can do. Uh, if I change the no throttling and refresh, it's gone back with the fonts, but it's still the same thing. If I refresh again, this time, because of the fastest, it's updated the cache from the network, and now we've got a new change. That's kind of nice. So toolbox.fastest is like a really safe option, because it means as you're going along, you'll cache things, but you'll also update them over time, um, which is really nice. The problem is it's quite wasteful, because it basically means you're not really doing anything other than having a cache as you're going along, which you can make a lot better. Yeah. So there's a couple of mechanisms, and it's too much for me to cover in this mini tip, but this is your way of saying you're lazy. No. I'm saying that right now, we need to find some better options for it. It'll all be good. Um, but generally, there's a couple of options. You can use things like if it's a static site, maybe build date or a build version of some sort. Um, if there's a way with things like CSS and JavaScript, if you're using file revisioning, mm -hmm. that's really handy because you can pre-cache. Just say, only use the cache because I know it's going to be there. and Basically, once the file revision updates, your service worker updates, and then basically everything will just train on from there. The browser will update your service worker. Um, yeah, and then there's also SW Precache as well, which does loads of crazy stuff with your build process and basically gives you a really efficient way of doing things. And it generates your service worker with everything set up. Yeah, but it's kind of it's a bit more of an all or nothing. It's a bit more um, config at the initial setup. Yeah, but it does result in something really um, solid at the end. So you've got two options. Like SW Toolbox is great. If you're first like tinkering with service worker tool, like service workers in general, mm -hmm. it's really nice. Cool. So people should probably go check out the service worker toolbox and SW Precache uh, build tools and libraries over yes. on Web Fundamentals. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Or GitHub. I don't or mind. GitHub. Either. They're I both up there. They're both good. Mm -hmm.